Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Kochik. I'm the founder and CEO of Chemical Q Device here today to talk about Washington, D.C. quantum efforts and quantum neural network neuroimaging benefits. This is discussion number 67, January 26, 2023. So as you may or may not know, quantum is a government initiative. A lot of the headlines that we see today such as ion trap and gate-based superconducting qubits and computing technology for quantum are due to a lot of the efforts from all these different agencies in, um, uh, for the US government. So I'm gonna go over the fiscal year 2023 budget. Um, so it's been growing you know, many, uh, many of the years, you know, and it's over $800 million annual budget. So that includes NIST, NSF, DOE. And then in specific, um, you know, look at some of the technologies and what's been done with that. And also focus on Quantum Economic Development Consortium. It's uh, based off of NIST and then connected DMV as well. So you've probably seen one or two of these pictures. On the left uh, is New York uh, Governor Kathleen uh, Hochul. And in the middle, you see President Biden. So these pictures were taken, uh, you know, some months ago, so October 22, I want to say, in Bloomberg, IBM is putting $20 billion with a B, not only to quantum, but other industries as well. And then you'll, you see on the right is you have, um, you know, uh, IBM CEO Arvind Krishna as well. Now, this is historic because the main thing is it's being used for cybersecurity. And there's standards out there such as IEC, ISO has two standards for cybersecurity so far, and they're you know approaching the approval mark. Then the, they're an inquiry, but they've passed some other parts of the stages. So it's interesting. So this quote it says, uh, you know, we are America second to none, and we own the finish line. Don't forget it. Quantum's been invested for many many decades, uh, as early as 1980s, early 1980s. NSF, um, you know, these weren't full quantum computers, but figure the funding was started with there. If you haven't been to Washington, D.C., it's it's the place where a lot of this is happening. So if, if you were to pinpoint, you know, this is more on the regulatory standard side of quantum, but you have, you know, San Francisco Bay Area, you have, um, you know, uh, different parts of, you know, Colorado, Boulder, you know, Maryland, uh, you know, actually Maryland's kind of close to this too. And here it is. So I took a look at the 2021 pretty closely. Um, it's kind of long. They're like 40 something pages and it gives you an update and it's basically where's the money going within government, you know, for quantum. And this came out this month. So quantum information science is, is what you hear, um, you know, with the government. So Basically, it's increasing R&D funding. Um, so this is the quote, increased research and development funding is going to ensure that the United States leads the world in the industries of the future from quantum to AI to advanced biotech. Uh, so that's President Biden. So it unifies quantum mechanics and information theory uh, is, is QIS. And um, the National Science and Technology Council is one of these, and there's many different uh, aspects that look at quantum. So just look for the cues, you know, in the upcoming slides. But here it is, Subcommittee on Quantum Information Science, SCQIS, uh, Office of Science and Technology and Policy is involved. And in specific, it's the National Quantum Initiative Act that got a lot of these things going. So this is, I believe, 2017 through 2018. And, uh, you know, it's basically these initial fundings, you know, bigger hundreds of millions of dollars, like on the low end. And then now we're, you know, annual budget closer to a billion dollars. So in all these things, it, you know, at NIST, NSF, and DOE are, are the three biggest. So you have within these, uh, DOE is, is still the, is the number one, and then NSF and NIST, NSF being two and this being number three, um, got additional funding, you know, this year. So Subcommittee on uh, Economic and Security Applications of Quantum, quantum Science. Um, so you have the National Quantum Initiative Advisory Committee. And then um, 
Uh, so NQIAC. So some of these are bigger than others, uh, but provides an independent assessment of NQI program. And then you can see 2022 uh, NQIC is now a presidential advisory committee. So, you know, quantum is, is at the tip of t people's tongues in, in DC, uh, according to this, uh, you know, this budget for this year. And, uh, you know, so you have other ones, so OSTP, uh, SQ, SCQIS. Now, when I first started researching all this, I was just amazed. I've done other reports on, you know, government and government, you know, partnerships related to it and government funding. And I said a while ago, uh, Quantum is a government initiative. So this is probably, I started saying that in late 2021. So here's the breakout. Now, as you can see, so you want to focus on one color at a time. So going left to right, you see the, the trend is for more funding. Now, the one, so the QSense, QComp. So QSense is at the bottom. Uh, QComp is on, on orange. So this is uh, quantum computing. And then you have quantum networks in gray. And then you have uh, QAdvantage in yellow. Um, and then quantum technologies, which is more like end users. So you can see that these have grown. Now, if you were to look at this and, you know, based on what's going on in industry right now, you know, with announcement that, you know, quantum computing uh, manufacturing plant in uh, Washington state, you know, this is the year, you know, for the practical quantum computer. I would say a lot of this is, is done to, you know, get uh, the ball rolling in industry. And I think the government's done just that. Now, keep in mind, these, you know, companies that we know of, INQ and you know, Rigetti and, um, you know, Atom Computing, a lot of it's due to the, the fundamental research that's been done by the, the U.S. government here. So here's some, so QSense is, is sensing, um, these are just terms or the abbreviations for them, QNet for Q-networking. Uh, Q-advantage is more like fundamental. So it's like, you know, resolving some of the error in an ion trap computer, those types of things. Quantum technology, as I said before, is more for end users. So the government uses these terms, you know, differently. So if somebody says quantum technology is a catch-all, it's more talking about, as far as the catch-all for all quantum technologies, it's more of a, um, you know, for end users. So as you can see here, so QIS-related publications, um, so it's been going up and up since 2000 to 2015, and then so you have information most. and you know, it just depends because with, you know, the cybersecurity th threats, you know, these things um, get researched different in more, in more recent years. Now, as you can see, federal QIS R&D uh, funding agencies has uh, three pillars. So they call it the civilian. Um, I'll show you in a different slide kind of the other breaks, breakdowns too. But to keep in mind in all this stuff is, you know, where is all this coming? So you hear of an NSF, you know, quantum computing grants, or you hear a DOE, you know, doing specific thing in internal research. And you hear NIST, NIST does a lot of like this kind of fundamental, get the quantum computer to work. And then NASA a little bit less, you know, they're more collaborating with other people. Now the Department of Defense, you know, features these others. So you hear of like DARPA, and you hear of um, Air Force Research Lab, Navy, Navy Research Lab. Um, those are all DOD agencies, you know, working, you know, some, you know, you wouldn't think Air Force Research Lab, but they do a lot with quantum. Now there's IC, so this is intellectual. Um, so this is the second part. So the first one's civilian, the second one's IC. And then I'll show you the graphic for the third one, but figure IARPA, um, kind of that, uh, you know, uh, fundamental research too. And then there's others, you know, that will touch on it and use it as it becomes more advantageous, such as FBI, USPTO, and DOS. And then kind of like the, these end users being NIH, like, oh, I got an NIH grant to work on this thing in quantum, uh, USDA, uh, those types of things. And then the remainder at the bottom there. So here it is. So to focus on here, so, you know, there's industry and academia involved, but when they say three pillars, they mean civilian defense and in, intel. So I mentioned the previous slide, civilian defense, you can see, you know, DARPA, so forth, intel. And this is modified. So I, I like I said, I, I researched the 2021 fiscal year pretty, pretty well. 
And then, you know, this year is just like, I, I did like a full analysis of it. Um, but, you know, basically there, if you have any kind of like, it, it's far more than just what you hear in the in industrial, uh, you know, news and the headlines is quantum is heavily invested in, it's, it's a government initiative. So this is basically, uh, as the years progress, um, I'm just going to look at 2023. You can see NIST has increased uh, over the prior year. NSF and Orange has increased over prior year. DOE remained the same, you know, from last year, uh, but is the number one in receiving funding. So on a startup side, for instance, you might hear of NSF the most because they, they provide funding to public companies. Um, so you have to do, you know, a, a process to, to do that. So here's NIST. And basically, global research in, in QIS, quantum, quantum information science, uh, for over 25 years. So that's the main thing with all these things is, you know, quantum is not a new thing. And, uh, you know, going back to the early 80s, so 25 years ago here for 23 you know, just at the turn of, you know, year 2000. Um, but basically, they demonstrated the first quantum logic gate, which is talked about every day. You know, if you talk about gates, circuits, and, you know, programming with, with quantum on a quantum computer is basically, you know, that's what you see um, is a lot of this fundamental research. And then you're, you're seeing internal basic and applied QIS research programs, uh, quantum enhanced sensing. And in specific, this is kind of like their bread and butter, precision me me measurement. So think uh, standards, um, quantum, quantum networking and communications, quantum computing and simulation, fundamental physics and scientific applications. So again, you know, if it comes time you know, to have your personal quantum computer in, you know, years to come, you know, a lot of this is based on this fundamental research that's been done in organizations such as, as NIST. And you could see, so uh, 2022, um, atomic computing crosstalk uh, improved, and then a bunch of stuff that they're highlighting because this is the 2023 um, report, is you see improved neutral atom computing, you know, so these aren't in your head as far as you, what you think they are. Is it's just atom computing or it's just, you know, Rigetti just working on this single technology on their own. A lot of it's been, you know, worked on and improved over the years. The, the superconducting uh, circuit noise. So they pretty much touch on the big ones um, that you'll see and hear about in, in industry. So um, basically fast, efficient, low power modulation of microwaves. So I think this is more photonics. Um, is number four, multi-node networks, you know, and these are all based in cities, all right? So the Gathersburg and uh, Boulder, so Boulder, Colorado, and then collaborations across the board. And then, um, you know, this is basically where it's starting off with the uh, standards. So NIST on a chip uh, is basically a term they put on this, uh, uh, cutting edge measurements, science technology to benefit uh, commerce, medicine, and defense. Um, I think it's a culmination of their research and they say, oh, you just need a NIST on a chip, uh, but it's kind of a catchy term there. 2016, um, you know, PQC, you've heard about these four candidate algorithms they first started. And then say, for instance, they're, uh, you know, they're out in the wild, they're not 100%, you know, but it's something, say, for instance, if, if May is the time where these federal agencies are required to implement, um, you know, quantum defense, that these are likely the ones, and you'll see NSA kind of uh, involved with that too. So 2021, uh, Applied Noisy Intermediate Scale Quantum Computing Paper Award. So this is gate-based superconducting qubit. And then, you know, in specific, you have uh, QSense, um, you know, breakthroughs, ion trap technology as well. Now, if you've never taken a, a trip to Washington, D.C., I would highly recommend. So I, I took a trip, uh, you know, with a group of people, say, around 2000. Um, it's a no, there's lots of nonprofits in D.C., but a nonprofit called Close Up. And it provided me the opportunity to see a lot of these things firsthand. My teacher at that time was able to get us into like the I forget, I believe it was the Senate. You know, Senate is just really nice, less seats, but just really, really nice. 
And, uh, you know, you get that vibe of, you know, politicians walking around and, you know, everybody's kind of like focused in what they do. But I would definitely recommend taking a, a trip and they have museums and all these types of things. So NSF is the one that I'm most familiar with. They fund over 1,500 projects, 240 institutes in 48 states. Now, their budget request is these things, you know, answer key science and engineering problems, uh, you know, questions, deliver proof of concept uh, devices, uh, empower the full spectrum of talent, right? So you hear about that, like education and quantum. If you don't educate people, most people won't learn on their own or, you know, they get lost quickly. So that's another aspect of government is, is uh, you know, having people learn about uh, quantum technologies. So you see these quantum leap challenges and a lot of times, you know, it's 25 million grants uh, grants to these established, you know, research institutes. And I want to say uh, UCSB, so um, uh, Santa Barbara, um, there's some in Chicago, uh, Maryland too. And transformational advances in quantum system tax. Uh, so you have quantum sensing challenges, quantum interconnects, quantum idea incubator, pilot opportunity. And if you've never read one of these, you know, this is the fiscal year 2023, the, the government is all over quantum. Um, now in specific, their research efforts, engineering research center, uh, CQM, here's the one, at, uh, the quantum foundry at UCSB. So that's University of California, Santa Barbara. And then uh, quantum foundry at Montana State and University of Arkansas, uh, Institute for Quantum Information and Matter at Caltech, MIT Harbor Center for Ultra Cold Atoms, so a lot of these just depends on the technology. I, I think that's neutral atom, uh, letter E there. Center for Integrated Quantum Materials at Harvard, Software Tailored Architecture for Quantum Co-Design at Duke, uh, enabling practical scale quantum computing at Chicago, so it's University of Chicago. And all of this is for a reason, right? Like it's not just to study quantum, it's not just to make the computers better, but you'll hear these terms bioimaging. Um, you'll hear terms bioimaging from satellites, you know, like, uh, you know, seeing humans from outer space kind of thing, or, you know, bio-based things. Material Science and Engineering Center um, at Princeton, Columbia Center for Precision Assembled Quantum Materials. So again, they're putting quantum in their names. It's, it's a huge thing. So you have Penn State. I'm going to show you a picture a little bit later, a photo of uh, um, a Joe Biden, a President Biden, uh, Penn State building, building that they've dedicated to him. National Na Nanotechnology Coordinated uh, Infrastructure, Sensors for Chemical Innovation. You know, these are all the ones that touch, touch on quantum. So it's not a new thing. It's, it's fully embedded into to government. And this is an example of neutral atom computer. If you ever hear somebody that talks about their research uh, with quantum in industry, they always talk about lasers. So this kind of gives you an idea. So this is Rydberg atom ex excitation, atom rearrangement, Rydberg excitation and local phase gates. Um, but this is for multi-qubit, neutral atom, uh, quantum computer. And then here's your detector up there, that EMCCD camera. And a lot of these, are, sometimes you see a quantum-based, you know, camera, you know, and then this is, this is a high-end uh, CCD camera, basically. Now, I can't remember, but on top, you know, basically the Supreme Court is the ultimate uh, appeal, appeal is how they say it. And if you ever go there, unless you have a tour guide, I can't remember if we got into it. But basically, if you do go to Washington, D.C., you want a tour um, because they can help get you into these places, you know, because they know who the tour guide is and not, necess not necessarily you. So definitely worth the trip. Now, DOE is the number one uh, recipient in recent years uh, for quantum funding. I don't hear too much about it, but they're huge because they're, they're more like, you know, huge labs, you know, advanced scientific computing research, basic energy sciences, biological and environment research, uh, you know, lots of high energy physics, you know, these types of things, very exciting, quantum sensing efforts, biosensors and, and bioimaging applications. So that's where you hear, 
you know, if you talk to people in government, you know, quantum sensing is huge to make, you know, better MRIs uh, for analysis. And then I'm more on algorithm side. So, you know, in specific, how can I utilize quantum computers, hybrids to get, you know, better, say, if you have an original I image, like a neural image, how to get better results off that. So you have DOE laboratories, you know, there's large QIS efforts, um, but yeah, it, it, take a tour of any of these, you know, if you're in the area, you know, if you know people that work there, basically. You hear a lot about Oak Ridge National uh, Laboratory. Um, now, provides access to industrial quantum computing resources. And then in B, it says uh, test beds for science. And then in I, uh, BI, it says access to Sandia, these are national laboratories, and Berkeley lab quantum computers. So they're not, I don't, it, the Sandia Berkeley seemed like it was more just open, you know, but it's worth taking a look into because if you're just looking at tra traditional, you know, methods such as AWS or like a D-Wave, you know, using their services, there's there's other stuff out there as well. Now you have five different uh, national QIS research centers. And uh, here's the bioimaging and sensing again in 2022. Um, you know, more of this extreme scale science and, and QIS, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And uh, this isotope program is interesting because the ones that do require, you know, milli Kelvin temperatures is it's basically, I think it's helium three, helium four mixture. There was a previous presenter that came on uh, uh, Marlu and she, you know, basically told us, uh, you know, trained us on this a little bit, what a lab looks like. But it basically, so your big companies, so your IBM and, and Google, that helium, helium, there can be shortages. So this isotope program is, is to ensure that this uh, super cooling uh, fluid is uh, kept in supply, you know, in order for the gate-based superconducting qubit, especially to, to remain functioning. Now, DARPA programs in specific, um, and again, if you're in any type of science, uh, I just remember in, in spectroscopy, you know, so say for like biochemistry, those types of things is my, one of my professors once told me is you pick the abbreviation first, and then you work backwards to what you want it to say. Um, now that can be in jest a little bit, but, you know, optimization with NIST devices, ONISC. Um, Underexplored systems for utility scale quantum computing US2, meaning that it says US twice, and then uh, quantum computing uh, QC. So you see these other MURIs, um, you know, on, on quantum programming languages. And I, I really encourage you, if you're really into this, and especially because, you know, quantum uh, random access memory is, is going to be a huge thing, and it is today to make better quantum computers. and to start pushing memory inside the, the quantum computer. Um, and these phrases, oh, quantum computer will never have memory, you know, those types of things, you know, likely go away as you start to see this, you know, push, you know, of the getting uh, RAM inside a quantum computer. Um, also Delaware State, so again, DEI uh, focus, and, um, you know, also with DARPA, um, uh, quantum benchmarking as well. Now, National Aeronautics and Space is, uh, you know, basically you have these three different divisions. And then, so we're talking about, you know, uh, Glenn Research uh, Center, you know, famous for NASA, Ames Research Center. But you're talking about quantum being applied across the board to pretty much every, I think they list on quantum.gov, 21 different research, uh, um, 21 different government agencies you know, touching on on quantum and, and especially more and more as, as time goes on here. So they actually sent, and this is a, an article, it was either the middle of last year or the year before, but basically uh, the SEEK, so space entanglement and with and annealing quantum experiment. Didn't hear too much about annealing in this specific report, but basically it's functional, it's practical, it's just kind of limited, um, you know, number one in, in eventual performance and then, you know, the types of tasks. But they basically sending, I think they already sent it by at this point, you know, quantum annealing to the space, you know, so you could say quantum has been sent, sent to the space. And, uh, you know, typically when we're talking about that, we're talk, talking about computing because quantum sensors are MRIs and lasers, or, you know, those are technically quantum sensors. 
So that's that's the distinguishing thing in these recent years is the the ad, advance of the quantum computers. Um, so you see both, uh, you know, supports quantum technology development efforts uh, for space communications. So everything with NASA, a lot of these start with S, so S for space. Uh, the AIMS Quantum Artificial Intelligence uh, Laboratory or QUAIL. And then you have NSA, uh, which you hear a lot, you know, as far as, you know, this is national security. And especially again, there's a law signed in December 2022 that requires federal agencies to implement quantum defense. It's here, you know, or at least the threat of other com countries, you know, encroaching on our data, you know, with their uh, quantum uh, offense. Um, so you see these different programs, uh, HIPS, uh, QIS, uh, Qubits and Silicon, uh, yeah, Shift. So again, you know, the names can be catchy, but figure these, you know, researchers and directors are, are, are referring to these names all day long. Um, so QSIS, uh, New and Emerging Qubit Science and Technology, and NEQST, um, and the list goes on and on. It's, it's, it's really quite something. The more you research quantum and the history of it, it's really quite spectacular, you know, that number one, these advancements, you know, say for IBM and, you know, Atom computing and uh, INQ quantinium, they're not coming out of the blue. <laughs> you know, there, there's backing, there's government backing. So here's IARPA's LogiQ uh, program. So this is more of like the uh, fundamental research. So fault tolerance, so you have trapped ion, two different types of trapped ion. You have uh, two just so transmon is basically a gate-based superconducting qubit, you know, uh, super cool. So you have a flux tunable and a fixed uh, fre frequency there. Now, in specific, in all these things, is that a lot of this research was based on, you know, lasers and MRIs, and, and specifically nuclear magnetic resonance is kind of like the precursor to the, you know, medical imaging with a MRI. Now, uh, we could talk about this later. I'll, I'll have some, uh, we'll have Q&A later. Um, kind of keep this in your mind if you've ever re read this book. So they say that science, the endless frontier, is the classical case for why government must support science. And the modern version is called the Quantum Frontiers Report. So that's like 55 years later to expand opportunities for quantum technologies to benefit society. So a lot of these are, you know, basically to for prosperity, you know, for uh, prosperities uh, of U.S. citizens with a lot of these technologies, and and you know, as it goes with it, you know, it's used in different ways in other uh, you know countries. So, in specific, um, you know, you see this uh, coordinated approach with uh, quantum networking and the tip. So NSF tip. I kept getting these emails, and basically, it was is it began this one. Uh, I think it was the first time in like over 30 years, a new uh, type of NSF program. Uh, there, one of the directors, his, na his name's, uh, well, his abbreviate, his name is Seth. And then you'll see a lot from Hint from Seth, you know, on LinkedIn. But basically, you know, tip is, you know, you'll get these emails like, oh, is this a tip for the NSF? But, <laughs> you know, it's basically this new program including Convergence Accelerator, i uh, America Seed Fund, I've applied for that before, and the NSF engines. So there's just a ton of funding out there. And if you ever, so you wanna catch this. So I think last year probably was on a Thursday because I wanna say I presented a year ago. It's coming up again this year, same date in 2023, April 14th, mark your calendars. And it's basically for a thing for government and just the public to be a part of this World Quantum Day. And it's it's basically, you know, it's open, it's, you know, accessible to, to many, many people, uh, but it's kind of like a celebration. So I, I think this year's uh, World Quantum Day will be something special. Now, as you see, International Ra Roundtable, and it's breaking it down, so the benefits, that it was actually called Quantum Information Together, two to the N versus two times N. And that's the whole benefit, you know, quantum, um, you know, based on number of qubits uh, versus a classical approach, the quantum advantage. So here's a good timeline. So when you first look at the, you're just like, that's a lot of information, but I'm going to focus on the pink. So red legislation. 
So you can see the big ones, uh, upper right hand corner, NQI signed. So this is the President Trump administration, National Quantum uh, Act. So National Quantum Institute Act. And this is basically put, I think over a hundred million dollars uh, between this DOE, NSF, and then that number in annual funding, it's a, it's a whole lot thing. So if you continue red to 2019, you know, KISS, uh, R&D, and then through 2022, the Chips and Science Act is huge. So the Chips and Science Act is aimed to keep not only uh, quantum com computing, but uh, everything, you know, high-end, uh, you know, technology, computing, those types of things on manufactured inside the U.S. So the U.S. wants to keep everything, uh, you know, here as opposed to if there's conflicts of interest having many things manufactured overseas. And then here you go here. So Quantum Com uh, Computing Cybersecurity Act. This is signed by uh, President Biden. And, uh, you know, basically in this one that it requires all government agencies, federal agencies to start implementing this. And I, I heard it wasn't, I didn't see it in the main, um, you know, the Congress uh, law, you know, but basically it's, you know, uh, it's a thing now. And then you have agencies. So the agencies in blue in 2018, NIST launches QEDC. If you haven't been there, definitely check it out. You know, they have good, um, you know, events. So they have, say, for instance, like uh, university um, students pre presenting a poster. And, you know, it goes way beyond that because NIST is highly technical and QEDC is, is trying to reach those end users as well. Um, so, yeah, this is available on the report. I'll put, I'll put the report later. So Quantum Economic Development Consortium is this NIST-based uh, uh, offspring, if you call it. So in 2018, and it's grown and it's grown. Um, like I said, it's a good resource. They have good, they have public reports. Of, I don't know if I include it on this one, but they had last year at least three of them. I think it was cybersecurity algorithms and quantum sensing. I, I read the quantum sensing one over there. So 2022 global QC market, uh, quantum algorithm, quantum sensing. And then it's also in conjunction with SRI. So it's a very open kind of thing. So there's many other parties involved just besides people that are, you know, QEDC, there's contractors and, and so forth. So Connected DMV is a nonprofit, and this kind of gives you a kind of like a different view of all of this. Um, they have collaborations with Greater Washington Board of Trade, Metropolitan uh, Washington Council of, of Governments, Consortium of Universities of Washington uh, Metropolitan Area, Washington Metropolitan Area Transport, Transit, um, Joint Force Headquarters, Local, includes local jur jurisdictions. So it does things that the other ones can't really do, you know, because if it's just government, this is more nonprofit, bring everybody in. And their big event is uh, Quantum World Congress towards the ends of, end of the year. Um, the CEO is named Stu, so he, he puts, uh, Stu puts on these uh, events. Now here's Quantum Policies and Ethics Center Strategy, identify, develop, inform, and build. And, and building on this national level, taking quantum to the world. And Connected DMV does other things besides uh, just quantum, but they're huge into it. So here you go, government, academia, R&D, investors and funders, industry buyers and users, uh, quantum builders, community. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a good nonprofit to, you know, look into. Um, so in summary with all of this, President Biden, says that funding is important to lead the world. And this is done through quantum information science, AI, biotechnology. And then uh, the R&D budget is over $800 million these days in recent, in recent years. Uh, the three pillars of federal QIS ecosystem, civilian defense and Intel. And then you have NIST NSF funding increases for 2023. Uh, DOE is the top. Um, NIST is, you know, innovating on the fundamental level. NSF funds, uh, you know, research, uh, you know, organizations within the 48 states. And then you have DOE's goal. You know, here it is, America's prosperity through several QIS programs. So keep in mind, the economic financial component is, is crucial in this. Now, I included this, you know, basically it took me on a trip down memory lane um, when I did a uh, close up as a high school student. 
uh, you know, taking a tour of all these, Abraham Lincoln, always bear in mind that your own resolution to succeed is more important than any other. So he has the Lincoln Memorial, which I've been to. Um, and again, we can have discussion and Q&A and, you know, you can share stories afterward. Uh, Jefferson Memorial. Uh, so that was due to Thomas Jefferson. I'm a greater believer in luck. And I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. So the harder you work, the more luck you have. Now, Joe Biden is a huge proponent, you know, for emerging technology and work ethic. So he says that the greatest gift is the ability to forget, to forget the bad things and focus on the good. And that failure at some point in your life is inevitable, but giving up is unforgivable. Now, I wanted to transition. So here's some abbreviations. And this is the whole, so this is the application. So if you're not familiar, medical imaging accounts for 90% of all healthcare data. And of that, neurology is the principal component. So I took a look at, so there's 521 FDA approvals for medical uh, devices, AI, ML, since AI, ML, you know, became a thing in this like 1995, I believe. Now, reconstruction algorithms with deep learning, segmentation, specific automated uh, segmentation, reducing MRI size with adequate performance. And it's basically pinpointing with all these things exactly you know, where to use a quantum sensor, which people are doing anyway, like Fermilab and uh, Bosch, you know, Bosch is doing, you know, quantum sensing too. Um, and then you have, you know, more of the software algorithm approach with say, if you have existing images, you know, what part of the code can you run off a quantum computer to get better diagnostics or prediction, uh, those types of things. So uh, basically, combinatorial problems and many variable capabilities are kind of the, the thing. And a lot of people, even heading up to this point, they said, oh, yeah, imaging, and especially if you have a Tesla car, those types of things, you're talking about big data sets and, uh, um, you know, this desire to, you know, do, you know, do things in quantum that you couldn't do before, basically. Here's a bunch of the regulatories. ISO, IEC is likely going to be the ones, you know, for medical, um, you know, algorithms to computing. This is, you know, this this covers the ten most recent FDA approvals. October, uh, October twenty-two. So, this is if you were to, you know, basically just wonder about you know, how to go about, you know, standardizing. And a lot of them have a, gr a grasp on this, you know, after researching it a lot more thoroughly. Now there's pain points in all these and it's speed, right? So you want faster for specific Alzheimer's quantum transfer learning. Um, you want availability to bigger problems, you know, to address these, the, the pangs of, you know, large images, you know, just saying, well, that's the way we always did it because the classical computer can't do it any other way larger data sets, larger models, um, accessibility to problems not previously within reach, you know, utilizing quantum mechanical systems, you know, opening things up uh, in neuroimaging. Now, education is a key thing. If you're familiar with any of these stories of, you know, creating new industries such as bottled water, you know, they, they people had to be educated on the things that were in the water in order for people to think that it was a need. And it is a need. And likewise with, with quantum, it's the education, you know, we have convent, we have convolutional neural networks, and then you switch to a quantvolutional neural network. And then you're running on uh, quantum hardware software systems. Um, and this is a thing that they they pinpoint non-deterministic polynomial time, hard problems is is the key, you know, for quantum to for advantage. And some of these is, is basically, you know, there's other uh, other types of Alzheimer's research, and you know, there's uh, established methods now as far as FDA breakthrough devices in blood and CSF. But the key with all of this and neuroimaging, brain imaging, is complexity. You know, the the blood or CSF uh, uh, sample doesn't think; it's not doesn't have consciousness. Um, you know, memories, all these types of things. It's a it's a unique thing that you know. Uh, it looks to be a, a, a very good aspect for, for quantum. So here's the key for chemical key device, licensing subscriptions and partnerships uh, in specific organizations that do good and well financially and help other people. And the call to action is basically to, to begin an R&D efforts um, ASAP. There's already, so Roche, QCWare, Strangework, 
uh, Rigetti, and at least one other, uh, you know, basically academic paper, IEEE, that's using different aspects of quantum for medical imaging, usually for classification. So this could be, you know, in my case, it would be, you know, is it demented or non-demented, you know, as far as uh, patients go. But there's a need for uh, medical experts and, and quantum experts at this time. Now, here's the products, and I'm get, so stage one is the Alzheimer's algorithm. Um, so this is basically pre-existing images using quantum with, and then you'll see, say for instance, myocognitive impairment to QML, and the goal is to get uh, an MVP that's number four uh, this year in quarter three, uh, you know, functioning prototype, minimum viable product is, is what they call. And here's the backing behind it is basically you have, you know, continual support for, for uh, medical imaging. Uh, you have these uh, new initiatives, you know, ADNI 1, 2, and 3. So now you have ADNI 4, so Alzheimer's disease neuroimaging uh, database. And you have um, all of this other research in, in, and I'll show you some of these other ones in quantum machine learning, you know, going a year and a half to two years ago. That they are they're doing great research you know it appears it's just they're missing their awesome quantum computer and that's where you're going to see your um, you know exponential advantage so here's stage one um so this is adapted from sabai et al but to use adni databases you know mri pets uh with the patients and you'll hear this a lot quantum transfer learning for hyperparameters for better results it's fine tuning stage two reconstruction algorithm and then in specific, this goes through all the steps of what's currently being used in AI ML um, in medical image processing. Uh, you know, and in specific, there's some, you know, quantum sensing in there too, but there's just, it's a whole new industry, right? Because when you start running things off code that's off a quantum computer and you know, now we have a dedicated, you know, hardware manufacturers and assembly, or not assembly line, I don't know, but next by next year, that it's definitely time to do this research. It's, it's you know, it's available. And with all these things, so stage two is basically, uh, you know, clinical drug trials, and I'll show you this next one, they require MRIs and PETs at different stages of all this stuff. So, you know, as the requirement for better neural images and you know standards keep improving as they are you know starting with uh, quantum cybersecurity and then heading towards medical is that it just makes sense like it's it's going to be better neural images with fermi lab with a you know new quantum sensing new quantum computer they're building on their own algorithm side you know mine and others um and then stage three kind of combining these things a little bit further down the road um, so you see other previous, and I always try to take the FDA approvals and compare it to, you know, basically what needs to happen. Uh, just, you know, begin a lot of this uh, quantum research. Now, product mar market fit for diagnosis, prediction, and validation, I broke these down. And basically, you know, there's, you know, pros and cons to anything, you know, so uh, say, for instance, your blood Alzheimer's test is required. Um, and then only the ones that uh, need it get sent to, uh, you know, like an MRI or PET scan, but that might increase the total number of, of um, you know, tests, initial tests, even though PET's not considered the first step uh, as would uh, blood be, you know, for lower costs and more availability. But figure more complex, you know, you need validation, you need confirmation, it's going to be neuroimaging for sure. So here's the stages kind of outlined. So this first one's Alzheimer's, uh, you know, algorithm. The second one is, is more fundamental to medical research, you know, reconstruction algorithm, future combinatory work, uh, and then potential FDA submissions. And this is basically to get advanced analysis uh, for neuroradiology. And then this is available. This is the deck. Um, so this was late 2023. It's available to download. Um, here's the driving forces. So I updated this a little bit, and then IBM Cleveland Clinic, as far as I know, they're finishing up the first quantum computer in healthcare. Uh, they started the, this last year, and they said they were going to finish early this year. They have a 10-year partnership, you know, regarding quantum and other technologies. NYU Langone Hospital, Fermilab for MRI analysis. This is quantum, new quantum sensing, new quantum computers, 
uh, number three, National Institute for Quantum Science and Technology, uh, Quantum Diamond Sensors for increasing MRI sensitivity. They do awesome stuff in Japan. Particle accelerators with, you know, with uh, MRI analysis. So number four, uh, Bosch. Uh, so they made an announcement. I think it was late last year. These quantum diamond sensors, uh, and actually they they've been working on this previously, and they want to use it for detection as well. Um, you know, on the hardware, but they'll have software too. So. Mount Sinai Hospital, Sandbox AQ, uh, figure cybersecurity, you know, and then these are the specific ones, the, the biggest ones that I found, quantum machine learning in healthcare, Amgen, IBM, IAAA, big paper. They use both quantum simulator, quantum computer, Roche QCWare, uh, NIH, uh, you know, Springer Nature, you know, lots of COVID kind of stuff as, as the uh, quantum hardware technology evolves. Here's a bunch of the, uh, uh, this is hardware, software, um, this whole landscape and uh, everything. Um, Alzheimer's Association, it's a huge uh, need to be met, $270 billion last year or two years ago, 320 estimated in 2022, a trillion dollars in 2050. Uh, a lot of these are caretaker hours. And then in specific, here's breakthrough device potential for neuroimaging. And blood plasma versus CSF versus neuroimaging. Obviously, the the nod is going to go in complexity towards neuroimaging, and in my perspective, the blood and CSF, the ones that got these FDA breakthroughs uh, last year. These are more early detection, and then um, you know to get confirmation. Like you can't go off of just one test. A lot of them require uh, some aspect of neuroimaging. Alzheimer's disease organizations, um, nature's view of amyloid beta and tau protein. Um, and then again, so here's the, the research, here's all the government agencies. So, you know, president of the US, Air Force, DARPA, Army, uh, NIST, NIH, NSF, NSA, uh, USDA, so NASA, IARPA, um, DO, DOD, DOE, there's, there's a lot. So if you, this is, this is the source basically, you know, for all the, the quantum innovation um, is, is the U.S. government. So I'm going to open things up here and uh, let's see, chat, and then feel free. I'm interested, number one, in, in people's kind of like experiences at, uh, and you can come on, you can start video and in D.C. Um, if you guys have taken trips there, you know, how long ago was that? Um, you know, feel, feel free to come on. And then, uh, you know, just interested too, you know, with the quantum aspect to it all, to it all did, was it, were you in specific aware that all of this, you know, quantum, you know, innovation was going on and, you know, funding, you know, funding for public uh, organization was going on as well. See a number of people returning here. Um, feel free to come on. So I see Kangala, uh, Brandon, either of you can come on. And then if not, we have uh, Ron or uh, Ali. And uh, you can also post in the chat. So this one. And then if not, we have some new people, some other returning people too. So Mark or Tim, you can go ahead. Uh, I, I was wondering, um, how much does the, the government um, funding quantum technologies, how, how much does that help um, jobs for the private sector? Yeah, so, you know, as far as I know, it's an all-inclusive kind of thing. Um, if you want to just, you know, you, when you say private sector, um, so who, who in specific are you referring to? Uh, well, just any, anything non-government. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, 
the the NSF is the one that's getting, I would say, the most funding to provide to the public or the private. Um, and, you know, so on, on the other side is more like the NIST and the, you know, DOD or um, say like the DOE, where you don't hear quite as much about, you know, in the news. But um, yeah, they have, you know, between that TIP program, so the TIP program that I mentioned, and, you know, it, it's basically to accelerate some things. They do other things b besides just quantum. So they do, you know, it's, as far as I know, you know, your traditional AI, ML, you know, submissions, those types of things for funding. Um, but as I mentioned before, the gentleman is named Seth, and that's his abbreviated name. He's the director at uh, NSF, and he's he's extremely involved with the public. Public, he goes to all these different universities, um, you know, shakes hands, these types of things. So you can get an NSF grant as a, a you know as an individual, a small startup, and they have you know NSF grants at, at leading universities too. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, and then the next question, so, and yeah, so you could type something in if you don't, uh, something's not working, Ron. And then, so with Ali, I'm not quite familiar, is NIH's program CARD also involved? So I think they, they consider NIH an end user. So that's basically, you know, if, if you remember the three pillars that, that I, I showed, and I don't remember in the report, and you could search for it pretty easily. So everybody, I, I can put it in the chat. Is basically it's the um, it's the fiscal year 2023 budget, and you could search for you know card. But again, I didn't I didn't see that term. Um, so I'm assuming if 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 you in specific or you have that spe uh, specific type of funding or um, are inquiring about it. So here's the report. And again, this is, they come up with these every year. It's this month, it, it's this one in, in specific. Um, let's see here. And then I'll do a search here too. Yeah, I don't see anything for that specific uh, reference for, for CARD. Oh, Center for Alzheimer's and Related Dementias. Interesting. Um, I don't see it being excluded. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that I, I don't think they go into that level of detail of all the specific specifics for, you know, dementia and NIH. Um, they have a collaborative program with us. UMBC. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, you could, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, I'll have this deck up too, so you could refer refer to it. Um, but as again, as the number one leading uh, type of dementia, I kind of think that I don't think it'd be excluded for, you know, say for instance, if, if you want to program in quantum um, and get funding to do that. So anybody else we haven't heard from? I see some other uh, new people come on too. Okay, so Brandon uh, asked autism spectrum. So again, I don't, I, I don't think that it's going to exclude any specific thing. So for instance, you, if you want to get into this, I last week I did a, you know, FDA AI ML, and one of the approvals is for alt, is for autism, and you know that's taking that, and then you take the funding available being made available to whatever. And again, I don't think it'd be excluded, right? So, and you would have to check with your specific, but these are all valid health, you know, causes and, you know, for potential to do even better with, with quantum. Awesome. Anybody else we haven't heard from? And then I think this might be Ron. Ross trying to come back on. Um, and then anything else? Have you guys ever been to DC? You know, to have you been inside the House or the Senate or, you know, seen the Supreme Court? 
there's a basketball court on the top of the Supreme Court. It's known as the highest court in the land. <laughs> so it's a court, it's a basketball court above. And um, yeah, it's just, it's the biggest thing is you see people walking around with agendas, you know, uh, I need to get here, you know, you'd be like, oh, that's, you know, your teacher or, or tour guy can point out somebody kind of famous. Um, but it's, it's kind of the place, you know, to, to launch off of in, in quantum because, you know, Colorado will likely get big and, and Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area will get bigger and, you know, Austin, te Texas and, you know, IBM's in New York. But, uh, you know, these protocols and standards, you know, this is like the home of, of it all. So as things progress and due to these, you know, billions of dollars over the years being invested in, into quantum is that, you know, this uh, likelihood for, you know, good medical uh, protocols, you know, um, will be coming through. And, you know, like with any other industry too, if you're in finance or, um, you know, say for instance, your transportation or, um, you know, there's tons of drug discovery too, but there's no FDA approval yet um, because say for instance, IEC, ISO, you know, these traditional bodies that the FDA requires don't don't have the, a quantum medical standard because say for instance we're just getting our first two to go through the door with cybersecurity and the chances are close to 100% because there's a law that's requiring you know federal ag federal agencies to uh, enforce you know quantum defense so so I saw some people come back on um, and then feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, we could go Ron or Mark. And then if not, were there any other questions regarding say, uh, you know, quantum in specific or medical in specific? We had autism pop up. Uh, we had Alzheimer's, um, you know, in specific card for NIH. I appreciate you posting that. Um, anything else on, on kind of like, you know, can I do this for this, you know, type of research, you know, per se? Uh, what, what about um, research on uh, illicit drugs and drug addiction? Yeah, I don't think anything's off limits. You know, it's just the the main thing is based, well, to get funding, yes, there's going to be specifics, um, but you know you just have to narrow it, like you know, in specific for that that type of uh, issue. You know, what exactly are you going to research? Because you could research like the, the you know protein folding, and we think that this you know fits in this molecule fits in like this, and that's why this behavior continues. So it, it's everything's just very specific. So I think a lot of these questions are coming from the basis of say annealing is being used as, as far as I know, kind of exclusively in drug discovery. Now, quantum annealing is only for optimization problems. So whatever you're trying to do, you can't fully say simulate, you know, caffeine spinning around in, in the computer in an environment that's similar to a human because that's thought to take, you know, millions of qubits, right? So a lot of these things are limited, like, you know, what you're trying to accomplish, because you can't in any time period in the, in the near years, uh, for say, look at a, a, a complete protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, as it's spinning, you know, translationally, you know, transversing, you know, in this environment that's similar to a human being. So it's just, that's how it is. It's, um, they make approximations. So it, for instance, in drug discovery, they'll take a molecule and they'll flatten it into uh, 2D and they'll perform, you know, optimization off that. And I, you know, to get away from this, is it like the, this very sp very broad type of thing that it, it all comes down to like, well, can the CPU do it? Can the GPU do it? Um, how many GPUs, you know, for that specific thing, if you're looking at a protein that's, you know, you're trying to get interactions off of those types of things. 
So, and this goes for the other questions too, is the, the biggest news so far that we have is Ion Trap. Ion Trap, I, in my experience is in, in nature, in these big papers is the only one that's kind of being seen as, you know, inching up towards, you know, better quantum advantage. Yes, it makes sense to run in this application because it can actually complete it or it can complete in this time. Now, Ion Q, I, let's see, yes. Ion Q announced that they're having, you know, a quantum computing manufacturing line in early 2024. So it's the first quantum computing manufacturing facility. So IBM doesn't have that. They're not cranking out. They're still trying to fix things. So, you know, say for instance, in any of these types of research you want to do, whether it's Alzheimer's, autism, um, you know, drugs, you know, those types of things, is that it's really limited to what the hardware can do, or you could do, you know, simulator, but it's not going to be as powerful. So I hope that answered the question, but it's, it's, you know, you could talk in many areas and say you could do one thing in this area because it's specific to that, that the you know, quantum computer is, is, is good at. And then obviously the other hurdles that you have for some of these other questions too, is, you know, going through clinical trials. Um, you know, I think the closest might've been the COVID stuff. You know, there was a bunch of COVID papers, you know, some of them, you know, big papers, uh, to Springer, <clears throat> BMC, BMC paper on COVID classification, looking at, um, it was either binary or tertiary. So you look at a lung and you say, if it's, I think it was tertiary, I think it was either viral, non-COVID or COVID or were the three kind of classifications that they had. And out of all that stuff, the hardware likely was the limiting uh, factor in all that. But yeah, it's a very specific thing. Cause you could say, I'm in this, I'm in this industry and then you know, it, you could be talking about huge biomolecules and DNA and everything that even a quantum computer can't, you know, face it in coming years. But if you're talking about, oh, we're looking at this specific area of DNA and we want to calculate the interactions of, of this drug, you know, in a specific spot, and we can do that excluding the rest of the molecule because it's not, you know, we found that that doesn't the rest of the molecule isn't interacting or, or folding onto the, the site, those types of things. Um, any other questions? And then, uh, yeah, so feel free to post in the chat. Um, you know, as we look forward to the rest of the year, we still have NSF's practical quantum computer, they say, is coming up. Um, Maybe more ion trap than others, it, it's looking like. So I'm going to put that one in the chat. And they've had this one up, I think, at least a year. So it's called American Leadership in Quantum on the left-hand side. It says 2023 year NSF funded projects, which could be um, as Tim said, like private companies, expect to deliver a practical quantum computer. So they haven't took it down. <laughs> and then if not, I think uh, we'll give Ron one more shot here. <laughs> having some, uh... And then keep in mind, this will be available on YouTube. And then I've got a little spot for the decks too. So if you missed this one or weren't able to catch too much of it, that'll be available too. Any other last questions or comments? And then if not, uh, this has been discussion number 67. This is January 26, 2023. Thanks for everybody for coming on and uh, have a productive rest of your week. Take care.